good to know you're still with us on The Breakfast. It's time for us to tick on the papers, we'll look at the headlines and we'll try to understand what, the, what they mean. I have with me two people to help make sense of it. Uh, Aisha Yusufu, the co-convener of BBOG, Bring Back Our Girls Group, and Demola Akimbola, publisher, Podium Media. A pleasure to have you both join us this morning. Thank you for having us. All right, we'll start with this day. Thank you for visiting. It's nice to be here again. It's our pleasure. Uh, this day has the big one. Uh, Buhari directs full release of 2.3 trillion naira to fund economic sustainability plan. That's it on your screen. Insists he has done his best. Urge elites to urge elites for fair assessment. Narrates experience with Trump and alleged killing of Christians. Then we have uh, PPPRA goes full blast, dumps petrol price fixing. Organized private sector backs FG on electricity subsidy removal. Fuel should be cheaper, says Atiku. Uh, just above the uh, nameplate, we have NATI. Fat disbuses 3.8 trillion naira to FG, others in six months. Still talking money, CBN debunk rebukes NESG, says intervention aimed at stabilizing the economy. All right, let's see what other headlines are there. The, the new COVID greeting between the president and the vice president on your screen. I mean, yeah, what more can you say about leading by example without greet by our elbows? Um, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Let's start with that uh, cherry note of the president and the vice president doing the coronavirus greeting. I'll start with you, Ademola, please. Oh, okay. Well, that seems to be the obvious thing to do. And I, I'm surprised, pleasantly, too, that the president, for the first time, is wearing his nose mask. I don't know when he's No, he's, he's worn it before. Mask, which is a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's not very consistent with it, but, but good that he's wearing it. And that manner of greeting has become the norm. So it's good. I just hope that it's not just for the camera. I hope it's for real. Okay. Uh, what some of our leaders do be camera is just unimaginable. So I, I, it's good. It's, it's commendable. All right, let's, let's go to the big screamer on the front page, Aisha. What do you say? Buhari directs full release of 2.3 trillion naira to fund economic sustainability plan. Um, uh, okay, before I, I, I go on to that, I think on that picture, I'll just mention the fact that uh, I think this was when he was going to Niger, and uh, the president, of course, you know, when he travels out of the country, actually wears the mask. Uh, it's only when he's back home that he doesn't uh, wear that mask. On the issue of uh, uh, the amount of money that has been directed to be released to fund economic sustainability plan, I mean, I think our government needs to understand that uh, jobs are not created just by dumping money uh, somewhere. There needs to be an enabling environment. And this is where the government hasn't really uh, been doing what it needs to do, as it should do it. And it, there's a need for that. A lot of businesses are closing. I'll give you an example. Uh, right now, there's maize. Uh, there's been an issue in the poultry industry. Feeds are very expensive because we don't have maize. And there, there, there has been, uh, the federal government has directed uh, and CBN has given waivers to some companies, about, about four of them, to import maize. And the issue is, what about other companies uh, that haven't been given waiver? What now happens to them and at what rate? And if these businesses close down, it should definitely mean a loss of jobs to a lot of people and to affect the economy. So we need to do more than just pumping money into, into the economy. All right, Dimola, let me ask you about the Constitution Review, also on the front page. I didn't mention it earlier, but it's just beside the picture of the president's uh, greeting. Uh, Senate gets 48 memos from Afenifer others. Uh, what's your take on that? Okay, on the Constitution Review, my take is that the National Assembly, as it is currently constituted, does not have the capacity, the sincerity, and, and, and the right and attitude to embark on a review of our constitution, simply because they are the greatest beneficiaries of the current constitution. Okay, I really do not know at all, to what extent they can go in sincerely reviewing the constitution. Um, 
the memos by Afeni Ferry are okay, but how representative is Afeni Ferry? Who is Afeni Ferry? And we also have other regions of the country who also have input into the review of the constitution. So it will be nice if the National Assembly considers input from all sectors, all segments of the Nigerian society, and to make sure that those who are submitting memos are people, I mean, that they, are, they, are, they fully represent the interests of the people. So yes, it's a good idea. Let's have a review. But my fear is that to what extent would the National Assembly be sincere in embarking on this review? Okay, let's, let's go to the Punch newspaper. Um, what I'll do is I'll read out some of the headlines and I'll let you um, take your pick. Khan knocks Buhari as president yeah. says Trump asked why he's killing Christians. I told you as president, headsmen, farmers, clashes, not an ethnicity, religion, not on ethnicity, religion. And then uh, your conversation with Trump weak. 105 Baptists killed in 2020, says Khan. And then the 30,000 Naira minimum wage meaningless with petrol price hike. That's according to the NLC. Oil marketers now free to fix prices, says PPPRA. Poverty, economic crisis deepening daily. He should know. He's the vice president of this country. Uh, FD debt now 24.52 trillion naira. Records 561.71 billion naira deficit. Uh, that's according to the CBN. Let me see what's underneath uh, the picture on the front page. We have um, police to arraign Kogi commissioner for rape, assault of beauty queen. And then law school bars parents, others um, as called to bar holds. I guess everything has to do with the COVID-19 situation uh, now. A choir teacher arraigned for alleged sexual molestation of seven-year-old people. And then we have this one that says Ogun needs 218 billion naira to complete Daniel Amosu's project. That's a pan. I think that's a panel. Uh, okay. All right, over to you, uh, lady and gentleman. Um, uh, okay, so for me, uh, just looking at this uh, headline, father teacher are in for alleged sexual molestation of seven year old. I mean, I don't know what is going on in our country. Uh, we need to do something about this rape culture, about this molestation, this sexual assault. Our children are going through so much. Boys and girls are being molested. And, and, and it's heinous. And as a nation, we need to do something about it. I think right now what we're doing, we're just playing with this, uh, with, uh, with uh, kids' glow. Uh, I, I will quickly go talk about the issue of the oil marketers uh, uh, and the fact that PPPRA says they are now free to fix they are pricing. I think for me, I've always said this, the fact that we cannot have say we've removed subsidy and the government will be the one to fix prices because you cannot say you buy the same uh, pump price, the same price in Lagos and the same price in Sokoto, who pays the difference of transportation? And so this uh, in its way, we allow the market to make okay subsidy with it. We will truly remove, and then the market forces to take care of itself. And in diesel, nobody's done one. Then finally, I'll talk about Khan. And say Khan knocks Buhari as president says Trump asks why he's killing Christian. Well, you see what Karma is doing. Karma has ensured that Khan has got in his voice, and it's a good one. But for me, I'm wondering why the president is bringing up a 2018 conversation he had with the president. Is it to divert his uh, attention from the killings that are going on uh, in Nigeria and the insecurity and the economic uh, woes that Nigeria are facing? Uh, okay, let, let's let's hear from Demola. I want your take on the thirty thousand yeah. naira minimum wage being meaningless with a fuel hike by NLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course it, it's obvious that it's meaningless. I mean that's that's the most point really. But the solution is not in now agitating for salary increase because that's not going to work. It's going to lead to demand pull inflation of which which we cannot afford at this point. Yes, we know uh, that. That thousand has become meaningless in view of not even the fuel price. I, a lot has happened this year. The interest on savings has been has been lowered. Uh, there has been fuel price hike. The electricity there has been stamp duty. There has been quite a lot of things that the poor masses are about to contend with. So yes, we can't increase salary because we don't even have the money. 
Because if we increase it beyond what it is, the states will have to struggle. So what do we do? We begin to focus on the productive base of the economy. Let Nigeria begin to focus sustainably on agriculture, on manufacturing. Then, of course, the vocational skills training for the youth. What the, what the Vice President is saying is the obvious. We know. Tell us, what is the plan? I was going to talk about the two trillion or whatever tri uh, stimulus that's been uh, that the president approved. Like 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 um, my colleague said, the solution is not in throwing money at the problem. My question is, where is the plan? Where is the plan? where is the strategy? They exist basically on paper. Okay, so the money is just going to go the way uh, the national feeding program went when the minister came to tell us that oh they spent so much money we never felt the impact okay so for me for government to implement a stimulus package we are looking at the capacity do we have the structure do we have men and women of honor who will be sincere enough to do what is right and before it can be successful implemented we need a long-term strategy it's not a one-off thing anybody can wake up and say i'm giving i'm i'm, I'm injecting this money into the cinema in which sectors are we going to focus that particular injection of um, cash. So that's just my own fear. I, I so want to take your Mr. thoughts Vice quickly President, as we are well. We're more interested in what we're going to do to stop, uh, to reduce poverty. We know that property has increased, yeah. I want to take your thought as well on the issue of the Kogi Commissioner. Um, there was a lot of um, uh, media outcry when the lady accused the Kogi State Commissioner at the time of rape. Now we hear that uh, he's been arraigned for that same crime. Uh, I'm referring to police to arraign Kogi Commissioner for rape, assault of beauty queen. Um, it, the, the, the wheels of justice, they say, grind slowly. For you, is this some semblance of some Something being and done. Slowly but surely. Uh, hello, Felicity? Yes, yes. I actually that, um, wanted Damala to speak a bit on that before we come to you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's a good thing that um, the judicial process is being followed. For now, the commissioner remains a suspect until the court proves that he is guilty. But it's a commendable thing that the law is being allowed to take its full course. It's good that no matter how highly placed you are in Nigeria, you know that if you are caught misbehaving in any way, you will face the wrath of the law. So it, it is a good thing. My appeal is that the process has been, has been started. We must allow the process to go through. The, the, the will of justice grants slowly but surely. So I, I am really interested in the outcome of the, of, 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 of the prosecution. It's a good thing. It right. sends a very strong signal to thousands of other people there, people in high places who, who, who do a lot of things behind the camera and I swear that they will get away with it. It's good. All right, Aisha, let's go. I mean, what's your take on that before we move on to the Nation newspaper? Uh, so, so, so uh, just, just like what uh, Demola has said, yeah, I do agree with that, but there's something that has come out of this case. And uh, we are being told that, first of all, the, the that there's some sort of like a deceit. The police is not supposed to file this case as uh, case where it did. It was filed at the FCT High Court, and they said the FCT High Court has no jurisdiction to try this case for some reasons. And one of them is the fact that this offense took place in Lokoja, and rape, uh, rape is, a, uh, is a state of offense and cannot be tried outside the place where it was committed. And so we need to be very watchful. And this is something that the police are, over time has done. I don't know whether it's deliberate always or maybe due to lack of capacity or knowledge. They try cases outside courts where they can be tried. And at the end of the day, these things are thrown away. So at this, in as much as here we're looking at the fact that this case is being brought to court right now, we should be very watchful and ensure that indeed justice uh, it, it, it got in, and not just for the police to bungle this up the way they usually bungle up cases. All right, let's see what we can do with the time left. The Nation newspaper is next for review. We have uh, Buhari orders quick release of 2.3 trillion naira stimulus funds. Uh, Aisha talked a bit on that uh, in the previous paper. Uh, ministers move to end doctor strike. Uh, there are a couple of riders parley in Abuja today. Patients leave hospitals. 
And then uh, Edo 2020 is also there, the latest from the Edo State um, governorship election uh, in, coming up in a few days. Uh, law school bars parents from Call to Bar. That's another uh, repeat from the other uh, paper. Petrol price protest in Oyo, Lagos, Ogun, Oshun, others. Of our robbery, I fled without my gun, says policeman. Uh, there are more headlines here, but I'll just, um, let's stay with you, Aisha. Which of these uh, would you want to take on first? Um, the one I would like to take on first, what was the first one you read? Just uh, so many headlines. That's just, okay, strike, yes. The uh, ministers, uh, ministers move to end doctor strike. I, I, and I think uh, we, we, are, we are something else uh, in this country. You imagine that at a time like this, when we should be thanking our doctors and ensuring that we give them the best of everything, here we are still owing them, still not giving them the enabling uh, uh, and conducive environment that they need. I wonder why doctors are leaving uh, Nigeria as, as soon as they can. I mean, other countries, for example, UK, they're they are making things easy for doctors to be able to come in. They, they've relaxed a lot of their visa rules and all of that to, be, to ensure that they get more of uh, medical personnel into their country. Then the ones we have, the ones who have stayed on, the ones who haven't moved on to other countries, we are not paying them uh, the, the way, the way they, they, we should. And, and it's really sad. And I wonder what NLC uh, is doing. NLC just said that way. it's only when it comes to minimum wage that they seem to want to talk about issues. You I can't, they're, whatever they're, they're minimum actually wage speaking you're paid, of... as long as there's no good governance, it will take away uh, the amount of money. Uh, you know, the NLC has not been quiet on this particular issue. They have been talking. Um, I, I don't know if you missed some of it. They are saying that the decision is not acceptable to them. And um, I actually spoke with uh, a, rep a representative uh, from... Um, one of the states in Nigeria, and he said that, no, they're not going to take this line low. Uh, the thing is that, uh, Felicity, NLC shouldn't be talking the way I'm talking. This, this, is, this is a trade union that, that can actually shut down a government. And if they're serious about it, they can do something. So it's beyond just the uh, a representative or a spokesperson just talking and moving on. Because talk is cheap. Talk does nothing to the extremity to this government. We need to see the NLC. Once upon a time, we had a nation where the NLC called the shot and they ensure that things are being done. Where is that NLC? Where is the leadership of NLC? We need All to right. fill them. Let, let's come to you. Um... Demola, I, I, I don't know. Um, the law school barring parents from the uh, ceremony, the call to bar, uh, what's your take on that? Is it a, a show of a, a high level of responsibility by members of the bar? It's a highly commendable initiative because all over the world, events are being held virtually, okay? So I, 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 see no, uh, I see no reason for any backlash on that. I, I personally think it's a good decision as long as it is related to COVID-19, okay? And that, I, that will be the first event that, um, uh, that attempts will be made to, 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 to control crowd. So I, 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 I think it, it is good. It's something that should be commended. I, and then anyway, what's, what's the point in everybody trying to attend the event if, if it can be um, streamed on Zoom and, and, and stuff like that. So yes. it, it, it's a safety precaution that is highly commendable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the Guardian is next. I think we can squeeze that one in. Now, um, Niger exports fuel to Nigeria as Egypt, Algeria builds 13 refineries. That's the big one on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Niger exports fuel to Nigeria as Egypt, Algeria build 13 refineries. Esparts won as ATMs breed dirty notes. As stakeholders remind INEC to of landmines to avoid in Edo Undo elections, uh, EFCC rearranged Malabu others over alleged laundering of $875.7 million. And then President, others, ministers, we've taken that one before. What I told Trump also, uh, that uh, headline has been captured. But there are some new ones uh, here. I'll stay with you, Demola. Okay, I want to talk about the Ondo Edo election. And um, for quite some time, I've been saying that um, if we're not careful, the, the, this, the level of violence that will mark the election in those two states will be unprecedented in the history of Nigeria. If you go by the 
um, highly inciting and inflammatory remarks by the key actors in Honduras and those states, you will know that something needs to be done. And the federal government needs to come clean on this. There shouldn't be anything like federal might. Let the votes count. Let there be adequate security. Let due process be followed. Otherwise, it, it is good. It's going to go out of control, especially in the those states. The tension is so high that I'm not talking about whether there will be violence. My concern is if that we are able to control the violence. That will be violence because nothing is being done really to warn the political actors to make sure that they, that they, they caution uh, their supporters. Okay, so yes, I would like to call on INEC, call on general police to be very objective, to be impartial, and to do what needs to be done to ensure that uh, the, uh, the, the, the elections in the two states are free, they are fair, and they are peaceful. Also, on the issue of um, Algeria and uh, Egypt building 13 refineries, it, it's, it's a shame, really. It's a shame. Five years of this government, the refineries are not working, no new refinery has been built. We are waiting and praying for Dangote to conclude its own refinery. And what our government be doing is, is really sh I want to believe that there is a very powerful cabal, there's a very strong racket that has not allowed us to build our refinery or to rehabilitate fully the four existing refinery. It's something right. that calls for serious concern. Um, over to you, Aisha. Uh, yeah, on the issue of re uh, Niger exporting fuel to Nigeria, it's, it's really sad that we are at this at this place, especially when we have the president himself. He's the uh, minister of Petro uh, petroleum, and this is somebody who was once minister of petroleum years ago, and keep posting about the fact that he was part of those who built the. Uh, it was really the time he was minister that uh, uh, our refineries were built, and you're wondering why hasn't that experience translated? To, uh, to to huge development in the in that in this in this in that sector. And what, most importantly, also is for us to look at the fact that we are losing so much money of over about 150 something uh, billion have been lost with this refinery. Some of these refineries and some of them have zero revenue. For example, Kaduna State refinery is almost 50 something billion spent on it and with zero uh, revenue. That money will go a long way in doing the things uh, that we that we need to do. It, it's really a shame that. We, we are at this place uh, where Niger is the one uh, exporting fuel uh, to Nigeria. And then on the issue of expert warning on the ATM, uh, breathing dirty notes, beyond dirty notes, it's also to look at the fact that what about COVID-19 transmission? Is there a, a possibility of that after happening? Because in, Canada, in a lot of countries, cash is no longer used. What they use, uh, they would rather use their, their cards. And some of these cards are even the ones that you don't have to use anything. Uh, it, it, it just go, goes off it. So these are some of the things uh, that, we, that we really uh, need, need to check. All right. I'm afraid that's where we have to wrap things up this morning. I must say thank you very much, Aisha Yusufu, co-convener BBOG, and of course, Demola Akimbola, publisher, Podium Media, for your time and your thoughts on the headlines. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. It's our pleasure. You. you take care. All right, and that's how we wrap things up on The Breakfast this morning. As always, your comments and observations are welcome. Please share them using our social media platforms showing on your screen. We'll be back with more same time tomorrow here on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. Be well.